okay, this particular lab is on hurricanes. You're actually going to be a real hurricane hunter with this particular lab. You will track or predict the track of these storms and the intensity of these storms. And in fact, on Scholar, I'm going to have this particular link connected. So when you click within Scholar, this is what will load. Now, let me just take just a moment to talk a little bit about some of these buttons you're going to see. If you click on narration text, this just gives you the text of what you're going to hear within the particular video. You can hit pause to, to uh, pause the recording, or you can start over from the beginning. Hurricanes are one of nature's mightiest forces. Driven by the energy linking the land, oceans, and atmosphere of the entire planet, their devastating winds and storm surges threaten human life and property. We can't stop hurricanes, but if we can predict their behavior, we can warn the people living in harm's way to prepare or evacuate. Hi, I'm Jason Dunyon. As a research meteorologist with NOAA, I study hurricanes using data collected from planes and satellites. I'll be your partner on this mission to track a hurricane, predict its intensity, and issue warnings before it strikes land. Now, the video has stopped here, and to go on to the next part of this lab, you would click on the Go On part, or you can replay it if you want to hear it again, or a narration text to read what was uh, discussed in the video. So I'm going to click to the next part. Before we get started, let's look at how a hurricane forms. Long before it threatens land, an Atlantic hurricane is usually born as a group of thunderstorms or a tropical disturbance off the west coast of Africa. If a tropical disturbance moves over warm ocean water, the rising air and moisture feed it to create a tropical depression, which starts to spin with the Earth's rotation. The tropical depression graduates to a tropical storm and gets a name when its wind speed reaches 39 miles per hour. If dropping air pressure in the storm increases its wind speed to at least 74 miles per hour, it becomes a fully organized hurricane, turning around a central calm spot, or eye. Prevailing winds can steer a hurricane over land. Where it crosses the coast is its landfall. Without the energy from warm ocean water, it quickly loses power, although it can still unleash heavy rain and even tornadoes. It will be important for you to forecast the landfall accurately, since the most people and property are endangered when the storm comes ashore. Okay, so that was the intro to this particular lab. One thing I should point out, you're going to want to, before you do this lab, you're going to want to view the PowerPoint slides that I present on Scholar and also the video lecture on hurricanes. So you'll have the background, the necessary background, to help you with this particular lab. Now, if I click on Go On. Your mission is to become a hurricane forecaster. It's complicated, but it comes down to three steps. First, predict the hurricane's path, or track. You'll analyze satellite images and computer models of changes in the weather. Second, estimate the intensity of the storm. You look at several factors to figure out the power of this hurricane. Third, based on the storm's track and intensity, you can decide whether to issue a warning that will help save lives when the storm hits land. Here comes a new storm now. I'll be here to help you. Just click about the map and I'll tell you what you need to know about the data you're analyzing. Let's get started. Okay, before we go any further, I want to show you a few items on this particular page. So you see up here it has the current task and receiving the mission. It's already talked about the introduction. We've already covered that part. Formation of hurricanes, how they form over warm, moist uh, Atlantic Caribbean Ocean. Uh, your mission, which is where we're at right now. And you'll notice here we're going to track a storm by completing three steps. You're going to predict the path the hurricane is going to take. And most of these hurricanes that you're going to work with are going to be over five or six days, not five actual days. You'll complete this 
uh, particular lab in under an hour. But it's actually, this is real data, real hurricane data, a hurricane that has uh, actually occurred. And so you'll predict the path for it each day until landfall, and then its intensity, how intense or how strong the hurricane is. If you click on this, it talks about intensity. And the storm's intensity is defined by the Saffir-Simpson scale, which we've already talked about in the lecture. And in speaking of intensity, if you click down here on wind speed legend, you will see the different categories. Now notice that here they have it under kilometers per hour. Uh, they, uh, they have it under the metric units. But a category one storm is 120 kilometers per hour. Roughly, let's see, if I take the 120 and multiply by 0.6, that gives me the wind speed in miles per hour. 120 times 0.6 would be roughly 72, 73 miles per hour. And the same thing here, a category 2 on the Saffir-Simpson scale was 153, multiply that uh, times 0.6, and I'm doing this in my head. In fact, let's make this a little bit easier and do it on a calculator. So 153 times 0.61 to convert it into miles per hour. Now you're talking at a category one being 93 miles per hour. Now you will predict the path, how intense it will become, and recall it's important that you view the lecture and the, vid the video lectures and the PowerPoint slides to show conditions that would help increase the intensity of a storm. One of the things you'll need to find uh, is warm water, very warm water. Uh, another part of intensifying a storm is the absence of wind shear. Again, this is all in the video lecture. Wind shear, recall, can occur in terms of directional shear and speed shear. And what we mean by that? We mean that with uh, optimal hurricane conditions, we want the wind speed and direction as we go from the surface on up, specifically directional shear is what we're looking at here. We don't want wind direction to change very much with height because if it does, it tends to saw off or cut off the hurricane and which would end up dying. So we want wind directions from the surface on up to be pretty much the same. And whether to issue a hurricane warning, that's when hurricane conditions are uh, about to happen within 24 hours. There's a definition there. And so you will actually make decisions on where, locations of where to issue a hurricane warning. So just a couple of items. Again, the wind speed legend down here to help you when you're uh, predicting intensity. And again, if you click on about the map, this will actually start the video again. Your mission is to become a hurricane forecaster. It's complicated, but it so let's say you don't want to listen to the video, you just want to read the text. You can come up here and you can just scroll through the text here. So there's some information. A hurricane forecast. So the next step, and I'm kind of walking you through this because I'll, I'll tell you how you'll be graded on this later. So if we click on go on. The brown and green land and blue ocean are from NASA's Blue Marble Map which combines multiple color satellite pictures to show the Earth's surface without clouds. This is the base map underneath all the other maps you'll see in this digital lab. The straight orange lines mark every five degrees of latitude and longitude. The vertical lines show longitude. They start at zero degrees in England and increase as you come west. The horizontal lines are latitude, which start at zero at the equator and increase as you head north. We track the storm's position using latitude and longitude coordinates. Okay, so there you, there you have information on how to track a storm. So we'll continue on. So here you have a storm profile. They're calling this David, and they're calling it a tropical depression. So you'd go through and read this. The storm begins to form in a non-tropical weather system in the Atlantic. Over the next few days, it switched directions that is, as it is organized into a tropical depression. Recall that a tropical depression actually has rotation around a center, a very diffuse type of center. If it then becomes a tropical storm off the coast of Florida, the storm becomes a hurricane twice over the next two days, each time weakening into a tropical storm. 
So this one's kind of a challenge. It's a hurricane at one point, then it weakens to a tropical storm. And things that can weaken a hurricane are cooler ocean temperatures and or the presence of wind shear. If we find winds increasing with height, specifically directional shear, if the winds begin to change direction, then it will begin to weaken a storm. Today, the storm continues its slow trek northeastward from Florida and is a steady Category 1. If you go back here under the wind speed legend, you can see a Category 1 here is 119 to 150, 153 kilometers per hour. Or if we do it in terms of miles per hour, that's roughly 72 to 92 miles per hour. So it's a minimal Category 1 hurricane at this point. So you've got information on it. Let's click on the next Go On. Now, this is what you're to do right here. Plot the storm center by dragging the target. Here's the target over here. Notice you can move it around. And you have a latitude and longitude associated with it. So we'll plot the storm center by dragging the, the target to match data from the research aircraft. It should be on top of the storm eye. Again, you can click on this. That is the area of lowest pressure in the storm. It's also the center point around which the storm rotates. In a well-defined eye, you'll see clear skies in the middle of that particular eye. Right now, the storm's a bit weak. Knowing where the storm is located is the first step in predicting its path. So here are the current conditions that the uh, Hurricane Hunter airplane found. Found the central pressure was 977 millibars. Its latitude was 31.7 north longitude 76.2. Recall that earlier in the video 25 north, 30 north, 35 north these are our uh, uh, lines of latitude okay that goes from south to north areas of longitude going from east to west 70 degrees west, 75 degrees west, 80 degrees west you see the line here 85 degrees west here now, to get it at 31.7 latitude, again, latitude is south to north, I'm going to move it up, and I can move it up to 31.7, and then longitude, these are the east-west lines, I move it to 76.2, keeping the 31.7 in place. You have to, it takes a little work with this. 76.2, 31.7, let go. So that is the center of Hurricane David at this point. Okay, you see right there, 31.7, 76.2. So David moved from here to here in a 24-hour period. So all I've done is locate the center of the hurricane at this point. Now we're going to have to predict where it moves next. But if I click on Go On, now, you'll see here, here's where it originally was, and then we moved it to the latitude longitude, so there's the center of the hurricane. Now, what you're seeing on here are lines of equal pressure. These, these are surface pressure lines, isobars. You recall that from this course. And so the lower values of isobars, okay, so... If I have the arrow out here, it's 1,018 millibars. Notice these lines change every 2 millibars, 1,016, 1,014, 1,012, all the way down to 1,000 millibars right here located. Now, these are not actual pressures, but they are 24-hour atmospheric pressures. So this is a computer model prediction of how pressure will change over the next 24 hours. So now you can use, typically what we're going to do is we're going to use the predicted 24-hour atmospheric pressure to help us move the storm. So you see right here the different pressures. If you click on steering winds up here Now, notice what you see here. So, in this what to do, it says this model predicts the steering winds 24 hours from now. Which winds are most likely to affect the storm's direction? Predicting the direction the storm is headed is based on the low pressure area and the steering winds. 
Right now the low pressure wind is here and you notice the steering winds and these are what we call upper level steering winds are moving from southwest to northeast. The upper level steering winds here are coming out of the northeast because you see the direction of the arrow moving to the southwest and of course the steering winds right around the hurricane is counterclockwise which makes sense because around a hurricane the winds are counterclockwise now as I'm looking at this this I would probably say the steering winds that we're seeing here would begin to move the storm maybe off in this direction following parallel to the to these particular steering winds so now how far to move this so again I can look at atmospheric pressure the lowest pressure 24 hours from now you see is right around the storm higher pressure is up in this area it will be difficult for the hurricane to move toward higher pressure it's going to want to move toward lower pressures so a straight move to the north would not be the way to go because it's moving into an area of higher pressure as I look out the lowest pressure is about right here at a thousand millibars and again if I look at the steering winds I'm looking at these over here so instead of moving straight north I'm going to move off to the east northeast parallel to these steering winds here so if I click on go on so from here to here it's been 488 miles distance traveled 488 miles so I have to figure out which way am I going to go well if I assume it's going to track the same direction along the steering winds and the same distance see how I'm moving this trying to match at 488 at 490 is close enough and again keep in mind if I go back here a second and I look at my steering winds these are the upper level winds that tend to help steer a storm remember I'm not going to move it to the north because pressures begin to increase to the north they begin to decrease right through this area here so the lowest pressures are right in this area move it again keeping it parallel to the steering winds that are over here steering winds here steering winds here and I click on go on and distance traveled was 48 488 from here to here where it originally was and where we placed it now let's go 488 kilometers roughly so I think in 24 hours it will be right here Will the storm center cross the U.S. coast? Well, I'll say no at this point because it's not crossing the coast. It seems to be moving away. Now, I've moved it a certain distance, and now I have to measure the storm's intensity or figure out how will it be 24 hours from now. Again, here's the winds. I can select the winds. Now to get a little bit of help, let me click on about this map. Here we can see the speed of wind blowing at the surface, or sea level. This current data was collected in the last few hours from many different sources, including ground stations, satellites, and aircraft, just like the one I fly in. The colored areas show surface wind speeds on the Saffir-Simpson hurricane scale. Just match the colors with the scale to see the maximum wind intensity in any part of the storm. Use this map to determine the maximum wind speed in the storm which tells you the current intensity. You can also see how much area around the center of the storm is experiencing tropical storm strength winds and higher. Okay, so let me close this. I'm going to go back a second on the direction and get some help here. If I click on this, so again, I'm back to the direction. It's moving, I'm gonna click on this. 
This map shows visible light images of clouds taken by the GO satellite, which keeps an eye on the weather all over the Western Hemisphere. From dawn to dusk, it takes a new picture every 15 minutes. These pictures help us track severe weather, especially hurricanes, by letting us see the clouds and storm systems as they evolve and move. Okay. So, let's see. I've moved this. I'm going to move it again, like I said, 488 kilometers to match what it had moved yesterday. I'm trying to get it close there. Right, close enough. And I will go on. And here are the tropical storm force winds. So it's tropical storm force winds are getting close to Myrtle Beach in Charleston, but still not quite there. Notice that the current top wind speed is 128 kilometers per hour, which would make it still a Category 1 storm on the Saffir-Simpson. So let's go on. Now, in this particular map, let's go ahead and get some help from Jason. We're looking at the temperature of the surface of the ocean 24 hours from now, predicted by our best computer models. Yellow is the warmest, and purple is the coolest. This is an isotherm map, so each line encloses an area of the same temperature. If the hurricane crosses one or more lines, then it's moving over warmer or cooler water. Hurricanes draw energy from warm water, especially water that's above 27 degrees Celsius. A storm usually gains intensity as it moves from cool to warm water. On the other hand, it tends to weaken when it moves from warm to cool water, or when it moves over land. Look at the water temperature beneath your predicted storm path. Is it warm or cool? Will it fuel your storm and increase its intensity, or will it deprive it of its energy? Now this is some important information. Recall Jason said 27 degrees Celsius is really the, the cutoff isotherm. If it's 27 or warmer, the storm will continue to intensify. Notice here, when it, it's sitting on the 28 and a half degree isotherm, and 24 hours later I'm moving it to the northeast, the water temperatures are decreasing slightly, but it's still above that 27 degrees that we're showing here. So as I'm looking at this, the storm will not increase in intensity, but it will not decrease. It will stay the same if I'm just looking at temperatures of the ocean water. But recall, besides ocean temperatures, we need to look at wind shear, the winds above the hurricane. And if I click on Here, this... we're looking at a map that shows wind shear. Wind shear is the difference in the speed or direction of winds at different altitudes. If the winds are about the same, wind shear is low. If there's a big difference between the winds, the wind shear is high. The colored lines show the amount of wind shear 24 hours from now, as predicted by our best computer models. The bigger the number, the greater the wind shear. Wind shear over 23 miles an hour will tear apart a hurricane and disorganize it. Look at your predicted storm path and the wind shear zones you think the storm will pass through in the next day. Will high wind shear disrupt your storm, or will low wind shear maintain or increase its intensity? Okay, in this particular, particular map, it shows wind shear, and recall what Jason said. He said a, a value of 23 or greater will begin to tear the storm apart. Down here, it was right around 20, and it began to, when we moved it to the new latitude longitude, the wind shear value jumped to 40. So the storm should be weakening, and then our 24-hour prediction takes us from a 40 wind shear down to a 30 wind shear. Now again, this value is still above the 23. So there's strong wind shear occurring over this hurricane, which should weaken it. Weaken it. Now, if we look at surface temperature, we're looking at the temperature of the surface. The surface temperature, recall he said 27 was the key value. So the water's still warm enough to support intensity increase. But if we look at the wind shear map, uh, again, we're still above that value of 23 for wind shear that Jason points out. So at this point, I'm thinking the storm will begin to weaken slightly. Um, here at this point, I am saying it's still going to remain a Category 1 storm. If the winds were to drop below 118 kilometers or below 119, then it becomes a tropical storm. So while it's moving into warmer waters, it's still encountering shear. 
So it should begin to decrease in intensity. So if I click on Go On, and again you can see map legends here. There's the values of shear in color. So let's click on Go On. So here it says, look at the position of the storm in 24 hours. In fact, let me go back here a second. Uh, if I want to decrease this, notice if I hit on the wind speed legend here, you know, select wind speed. Notice it's changing here. I want to go back a second because I want to see what the storm speed was here. Okay, it was 128 kilometers per hour right here. So at that point, it was a um, it was a category one. Now we're predicting, or I'm predicting, 24 hours for it to move here. The water's still warm enough to support the hurricane, but and the it's still the wind shear is still present. So 128, will it be able to maintain, or will it go down? I am thinking the warmer waters and the shear is probably a wash. So I'm going to still stay at a category one for it. So the next question, um, it says, will the tropical storm winds reach the U.S. coast? The way I've predicted, it won't, if I've got the, the predicted direction correct. So this was day one. Now we're going to look at day two, and it will give us what has happened. So look at the forecast score there. Today my forecast score was 350 out of 600. Obviously I missed a few items. For the intensity part, I got 250 uh, points. Actually, actually, I did quite well. The total score is 600 out of 600. Uh, my today score was 350. My intensity bonus was 250, so apparently I got the intensity right, which brought me up to 600 for the total score. So here was the actual location, 31.4 north, 75.9 west. Notice I had uh, 32.8 and a longitude of 73.2. So the actual storm did not track due northeast, it tracked more to the north. So the difference in distance was roughly 300 kilometers, or I was off by about 180 miles. My predicted storm intensity, which was 137, the actual intensity was 120, so it did decrease a little bit, was only 17 kilometers per hour. So pretty close on the intensity. So it says here, you didn't predict the storm well. Today the storm shifted track. The storm began traveling northeast parallel to the Georgia-South Carolina coast. So I should have actually had the distance come right along here. So I was off by a few degrees. At midday, top wind speeds reach 137 kilometers per hour. So we go on. We're on day two now. So now we're going to drag this to the correct Notice the pressure went up just slightly from 977 millibars to 978. So the intensity stayed about the same. The warm, uh, the warm ocean water helped support it. The shear, while still strong, did not destroy it. So I'm going to readjust to 31.4. 31.4. And then 75.9. So notice the storm pretty much stayed where it was the, the day before. And part of that, I was using the steering winds down here, thinking they would influence the storm, but the steering winds right around the storm is what influenced it. So that's where it is. Let's click Go On. And now what you're looking at, here's the storm. And again, we're looking at the atmospheric pressure, a 24-hour prediction of the atmospheric pressure, the lowest pressure is going to be right in this area. So current storm is here. The lowest pressure is right in this area. So I am going to say it's now going to jog to the northwest. If I can get it to go that way.
because again it's located here but the 24 hour pressure the lowest pressure is over in this area so the storm is now going to begin to make a jog to the northwest is what I'm predicting now look at the steering winds now the steering winds around this southwest to northeast and northeast to southwest so again, the steering, the, the steering winds are a little bit weaker today than what they were yesterday. So I'm going to use the change in pressure to be my primary guide. So like I said, this, currently the storm's here with the blue dot. That is the center of the hurricane. And then as the lowest pressure 24 hours from now is off to the northwest of the storm, I'm going to jog it to the northwest. Again, steering winds are kind of negligible here because we've got one going this way and another one going this way. Click on go on. So distance traveled 70 kilometers. So I'll move it 70 kilometers to the northwest. So let's get a little help here from him. This map shows visible light images of clouds taken by the GO satellite, which keeps an eye on the weather all over the Western Hemisphere. From dawn to dusk, it takes a new picture every 15 minutes. These pictures help well, us track the same information we had before. So I'm predicted distance. I'm going to say that the distance traveled from the day before from here to here. I'm going to say it's going to travel back. So it's going to be back about where it was before. Will the, US, will the storm center across the coast? Nope, because we're going to put it right here in 24 hours. And let's see, the storm's intensity. Again, we will, um, let's see, current top wind speed is 120 kilometers. So it's still a Category 1, just barely. So I look at the surface temperatures. Again, recall he said 27 was a key number, degrees Fahrenheit, to keep the storm growing. It's sitting on the 28.5 degree uh, isotherm so it's going to be quite warm still look at the wind shear map and now the storm is entering high values of wind shear notice here values of 40 if we go back here let's listen to Jason again about the wind shear necessary to tear the storm apart here we're looking at a map that shows wind shear Wind shear is the difference in the speed or direction of winds at different altitudes. If the winds are about the same, wind shear is low. If there's a big difference between the winds, the wind shear is high. The colored lines show the amount of wind shear 24 hours from now, as predicted by our best computer models. The bigger the number, the greater the wind shear. Wind shear over 23 miles an hour will tear apart a hurricane and disorganize. Okay, 23 is the number. And notice it's moving into the 40. It's over 40 and still staying in the 40 values. This storm's going to weaken. Even though it's sitting in warm water, the winds above it are moving much more quickly. The change in direction, it's going to start uh, decreasing the intensity. I'm going to downgrade this to a tropical storm because recall it was it's currently at 100, uh, it was right at 120. I'm downgrading it to a tropical storm. I think it's going to go less than that. So I'll click on go on. And look at the position of the storm in 24 hours. The green wind envelope, it's asking me, will tropical storm, storm force winds reach? It's getting awfully close to Myrtle Beach right now, but it's not quite on the coast. It's getting close, though. But for now, I'm going to say no. So now we'll find out how what we did with this part. Okay, intensity did go down. It went down uh, from 100 and 120 down to 112 because of the wind shear. And if you look at here, you'll see the intensity is uh, my predicted, let's see, the predicted intensity was 90. So I'm a little bit off there. But look at the uh, latitude longitude. I said it would be 31.7, 77.3 west. I'm sorry, this is the actual location at 31.7 north. I predicted 31.7 north, nailed that. The longitude, the actual location, 77.3. I have it at 76.3 west. So not, 
I missed it by a degree off to the west, but that's pretty much dead on. Difference in distance was only 94.61 kilometers, uh, which would be about roughly a little less than 55 miles. The predicted versus actual intensity was about 22 kilometers per hour, not very much. That would be about 12 miles per hour difference. So it says here, terrific job. This was surprising. The storm continued its slow and erratic movement and completed a full clockwise circle off the Georgia South Carolina coast. It lost intensity, possibly as a result of passing over its own wake of upwelled cooler water. With weakening winds and increasing internal pressure, the storm is steadily disintegrating. It is now a tropical storm with 130 kilometers per hour. And so you'll see the score. My score for today was 600 out of 600. I got an intensity bonus of 250. The total score right now is uh, 1450 out of 1200. So I'm doing excellent uh, over the possible total score. So then you would go on, and you would go on to the next day, again, just changing the plot, what we did for day one and day two, and you'll continue to work through this, and let's just go ahead and I'll continue, uh, actually I'm not going to continue with this one, because I've covered the most difficult concepts of this particular lab, I'm going to let you figure this out. Now when you're sitting down to do this, you may not have this particular storm, it has five or six storms that it's using, and depending upon when you click on the link, will produce a different storm. Now the question is, how am I going to grade you on this? Well, I'll show you, because what I'm going to be looking at is your total score. And let me see the one that I did yesterday. Let me see if I can find that here. Ah, here we go. So when I did this yesterday, I had a total points 8,100 out of 9,200. And in fact, I got a rating of expert forecaster. Uh, there are different levels of forecaster. I think junior forecaster is another one. But for you to receive a 10 out of 10 on this lab, you need to garner an expert forecaster rating. Now, if you're below that, uh, if you end up with a junior forecaster, you'll have a lower score. But to get a 10 out of 10 on this lab, just keep repeating this until you get the expert forecaster rating. Once you do, do what I did, and I took a picture of uh, the final score. In fact, the one I did was Hurricane Katrina. It tells you at the end, once you've completed it. And if you get the rating of expert forecaster, then you will have a 10 out of 10 on this hurricane lab. So this is pretty cool. I'm looking forward to seeing what you end up getting. Uh, if you want to, you can take a picture with your cell phone. Once you get your rating, you can email that to me. Just go ahead and email it to me. And uh, make sure you hit the deadline for the hurricane. And have fun with this. This is kind of a cool simulation. And it allows you to synthesize the information that you learned from the video lectures and also the PowerPoint files. Let me know if you have any questions and have a good day.